हेलो हेलो सर हाय हाय सर गुड गुड हाय हाय यस सर सो आई थिंक अभी पीपल वर जॉइनिंग सर या शोर शोर वी कैन वेट या यस यस सर ओके will it be possible for, for me to uh, put with the presenters uh, view uh, yes sir i am doing that sir okay
Sir? Yeah. Sir, you can try to share your presentations. Okay, I'll share. Yeah. How to go for the presenter's view? Uh, just slideshow. Sir, it didn't enter into the slideshow, sir. It's just showing the presentation. Uh, now it has entered, sir. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, um, mine is not the presenter's view currently. Okay. Just a minute, sir. Yeah. Sir, what's visible on your screen, sir? Sorry? Uh, what is visible on your screen, sir? Like, uh, what are you, I mean, because we can see your presentation no. clearly, sir, on the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. And uh, um, can you see this part also? Uh, ah, I mean, yeah. uh, I'm, Yes, is it sir. only the presentation scene or it's the is the full view of the PPT that is seen? Yes, sir. It is the full view of the PowerPoint presentation. View. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. If you enter into uh, the but... slideshow view, I can see the home slides, sir. The first slide that you have kept. Now, suppose I go here, but I'm unable yeah. to see the uh, mm, the presenter's view in this this particular yeah. mode. Sir, you, you will have to able... you will have to uh, click on the left side. You will have get the option to go for present. No, in the presentation mode, select okay. uh, the presenter view. 
on the left side there will be like you have to click there will be options I think that is not working. Anyway, you can let me know when when we can uh, go ahead. Is it the same, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I think it's uh, better now. Yeah. So you can okay. let me know when when we when to start. Um, yes, sir. We'll, we'll yes. wait for two more minutes, sir, and then yeah, I think sure. we can start. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure.
Sir, I think uh, we can start, sir, uh, because we have around 39 people in the call. So, uh, hi, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the Society for Healthcare Simulation fifth uh, webinar. So, today uh, we have uh, Dr. Sapan Kumar. So he's a consultant in Sri Balaji Institute of Medical Sciences and he has done his uh, MD respiratory medicine in CMR well. In the group that we have today, uh, does everybody use a simulation just for the... Uh, uh, we mostly have simulation experts. This thing only, I wanted sir. to know. Yeah, mostly all of them are Kathy, from what simulation. Do you say? Yes, sir. They're all our Society for Healthcare Simulation members. Yes, sir. It's over to you, sir. Sir, you can start, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, Sapan, sir. Hello. Hello. Sir, you're not audible. Hello. Sir. Hello. Hello, uh, Am I I audible request... now? yes, sir, you are audible now, and I request all the audience to just mute themselves. Over to you, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Sir, you're audible. You can you can start, sir. Mm -hmm. Is it audible now? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You can just, yeah, you can, sir. Oh, 
so you can let me know when we can start so we can sir you can start sir So hi everyone. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Sipan. I'm a MD in respiratory physician. And uh, good evening once again. And I think uh, we are good to go. If everybody can hear me. So uh, today's topic is integration of low cost simulation in uh, uh, medical education and in medical simulations. So. Um, I'm not sure what type of uh, 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 crowd we are having this evening because uh, people who regularly use the simulations, they'll be well versed with certain uh, certain terminologies that we'll be discussing. So, uh, so first, I would like to go through just the basic definition uh, as to what simulation is. So simulation... Uh, by definition, is a method or a technique that is employed to produce an experience without going through the real life event. But in basic terms, what it basically means is simulation is nothing but a technique. It is not a technology. It is not anything else. But in simple words, simulation is equivalent to a technique. And in any way, if we can imitate a real life event, that becomes a simulation. Another uh, very important terminology that we'll be keep on encountering is something called fidelity. So fidelity is basically something, uh, if if uh, something low fidelity is something not very close to what is real and something high fidelity is something what is very close to uh, reality. Another important terminology is competency. So competency is basically, this is the definition from uh, uh, NMC. Uh, and uh, competency is basically a, uh, it's a uh, it's a combination of skill, knowledge, and behavior. Basically, it's a broader meaning than a proficiency, is. and it involves the other attributes like decision making, problem solving, and interpersonal skill. Yeah, beta. Whereas proficiency is just being uh, good at one particular skill so according to the uh, textbook definition proficiency is basically high standard of a skill for one particular for a, any particular job and coming to uh, the dufius model of skill acquisition basically we start from uh, the novice and all the way up to competent to proficient to a uh, expert level and uh, to use simulation is the way that we are um, encouraging the the beginners or the trainees to become more proficient or co at least be uh, uh, competent at certain skills so according to uh, uh, what what expertise is is the development of expert performance uh, will be primarily constrained by individual engaging in deliberate practice and the quality of available training resources. So what basically expertise is, is the deliberate practice and has the motivation and there's a lot of time that is involved. So uh, when somebody becomes an expert, so according to Malcolm Gladwell, it requires about 10,000 hours for a chess player or a neurophysician or a musician to become uh, excellent at their job, which roughly equivalents to 10 years of uh, work, which I think is practically uh, not possible if we want our students to uh, become uh, competent at least competent in uh, the the uh, the the skills that we want them to be and what is stopping us is the uh, the limited type of patient load the restriction in the faculties 
the limited working hours, the reduced availability of the operating time, and also the medical, legal, and ethical issues. And these are certain benefits of uh, simulations, like we are uh, um, having patient safety. We are we can a person can we can rehearse multiple uh, events at uh, at the same time. The simulation can be modified to certain clinical complex uh, scenarios, and uh, the same skill can be practiced at multiple uh, multiple times by the by the trainee. And the whole purpose of simulation is to develop the muscle memory. Basically, what that means is that we have to practice the skill so much that we don't have to think. And automatically, we do the uh, next step when something happens. So that is what the purpose of uh, simulation is. This is coming to the learning curve. This is the basic learning curve where uh, somebody who's a slow beginner, then uh, with the more number of uh, cases that they uh, do, they develop uh, increased performance. And at certain point of time, uh, proficiency is achieved. Proficiency, as I was talking, is basically a, a high skill in a specific task. And after some time, there is a plateau. So uh, this, according to a study, basically, there are two uh, type of trainees that have been taken and uh, during the time of training and after the uh, training has finished. So uh, there are these six different tasks that has been given. So as you can see in the trainee B, even uh, who are, this is somebody who's a slow learner. This is practically possible. Like uh, not everybody can be equally uh, efficient in all the tasks. So uh, uh, people become competent at different point of time so this is a this is just the hypothetical learning curve of two different trainees for six different tasks and uh, this is the practical scenario and what we want is that the uh, through the through the uh, uh, our training the level of entrustment is achieved that is at least level 4 where residents can act independently and do the job so uh, during the training itself, they should be able to uh, reach the level of competence to uh, do a particular job so that they can work at least independently. So uh, this is a study that has been uh, uh, done, which shows uh, performance of uh, trainee when they were taught this particular procedure called endobronchial ultrasound. And uh, as compared to what an expert is. So in the traditional way of teaching, it was found to be uh, uh, slightly inferior to the uh, people who actually first underwent a simulated training. So it was shown that simulation uh, simula uh, uh, prior to actually going to the training on the patient, if the simulation is, uh, if the training is done on simulation, it accelerates the training. And it uh, it in, it uh, decreases the the learning curve of uh, during the uh, whole process of learning, and it is also uh, uh, considered that simulation is actually only the imitation and not the replication of the reality. And uh, once uh, trainee is uh, com completes the simulation training, should always go and uh, do it on a uh, patient. So simulation-based training can be considered only as a complement or an augmentation of what a traditional teaching is. And the uh, three steps of uh, three step approach is uh, recommended. That is first is learning the theory. Second is uh, simulation-based learning. And third is practicing either supervised or performing independently on the patient. So coming to what is low-cost simulation. So uh, low-cost simulation is basically using low-cost available resources to create lifelike, clinically relevant, inexpensive, and durable uh, model trainers or simulations for a resource-limited setting for uh, gaining competency in certain 
clinical skills. And this can be made from paper, ceramic, rubber, silicon, 3D printed. It can be uh, augmented reality or virtual reality. Basically, it can be made from anything. It's uh, only up to our imagination as to what we can use. So, and how, how integration of this low-cost simulation can be done uh, to evaluate the proficiency. So, um, many of you would have heard of four chord. So, there's a, a group called Access of Awesome who theorized that all pop songs ever played can be played with just these four chords, C, G, A, and F. So basically what it means is they have, uh, if we, if somebody can practice these four chords, they can play almost all the, uh, all the pop songs ever that was being created. So similar to that, somebody in the surgical community, they come up, they came up, they divided the very complex uh, laparoscopic skill into these four basic tasks. And uh, they broke down the laparoscopic skill into these four basic tasks. And people who become uh, uh, trained, they, they complete this training at, at, at a particular time. They were given a, a proficiency badge. So this particular task is called LEPAS, that is laparoscopic passport. This is uh, uh, valid uh, currently internationally also and specifically in uh, United Kingdom. So basically what it does is it incorporates the fundamental knowledge and technical skills that are required for doing any basic laparoscopic surgeries. And it develops the psychomotor skills and dexterity. So after the person completes this particular uh, low cost training task, they are given a badge, which, uh, which the, which the LAPAS claims that it marks out the serious laparoscopic surgeons from uh, the other other counterparts and also it proves the uh, level of proficiency so this is where maybe we can keep uh, the lapas and the U us counterpart is something called fls it is basically uh, why these are important is because uh, these these are uh, fls is one of the uh, only uh, trainings that has shown to convert the uh, skill into what uh, how a person is performed actually in real life so um, this is where uh, fls and lapas uh, play a role and uh, low cost simulation can also be used in evaluating uh, certain skills like in this particular scenario uh, this uh, this particular uh, student, nursing student, is um, getting evaluated for uh, cleaning and wound dressing. Similarly, we can do the same thing for uh, evaluation of how a suturing, uh, simple suturing is being performed. Also, we can integrate the low-cost simulations in teaching very complex uh, uh, scenarios like you can see this is a guideline for management of postpartum hemorrhage by who and you can see it's a quite uh, busy and complex uh, tasks that are involved and these can be broken down into each and every uh, aspect so suppose we are taking say like bimanual compression of the uterus so there is this study which has already uh, been uh, uh, validated and is being peer reviewed. We can use that study. And then after that, uh, they have taken uh, evaluation under anesthesia, balloon tamponade, balloon suture. And taking all this into consideration, we can uh, design a module for our uh, medical students and registrars so that they can practice and get a, uh, get a fair uh, level of uh, expert uh, or uh, fair level of uh, uh, knowledge, know-how into how a management of PPH is done. Now, after that, once once individual task has been, uh, we gain the competence in each task, this individual task can be put into a commercial simulation model or a low-cost simulation model to get a comprehensive uh, knowledge of all the steps that are involved in 
मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पीपीएच ऑल्सो नाउ वेर टू वी प्लेस लोक ऑफ सिमुलेशन इन मेडिकल एजुकेशन सो बेसिकली वॉट इट इज सेट इज लो कॉस्ट सिमुलेशन और लो फिडिलिटी सिमुलेशन आर गुड फॉर अटेनिंग द बेसिक लेवल ऑफ कॉम्पिटेंस सो मे बी टिल इंटर्न एंड टू द ट्रेनी लेवल इट इज बेस्ट दैट दे विल बी एबल टू गेन द मैक्सिम अमाउंट ऑफ नॉलेज विथ मीन मीन विथ द लीस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ कॉस्ट एंड विथ Uh, the available time that they have and the resources that are available whereas somebody who is a, a professional or a expert trainee they can go ahead with a high fidelity high cost simulation to train on certain uh, case scenarios and uh, this is where uh, i think the low cost simulation can be uh, put this again the same thing basically uh, where where uh, where uh, where we are keeping the uh, the low cost simulate the low fidelity low cost simulations at maybe around uh, uh, competent to proficient level and maybe after after that the expert level and uh, above uh, to gain knowledge maybe the high fidelity simulations will be more helpful in this subset of uh, people but the majority of the people i think it is the bet, better that low cost low sum, uh, low, low cost uh, low fidelity simulation are the best so now it is time that uh, we uh, we we looking at the constraints of time and uh, and availability of the resources uh, it is time for uh, the medical education to practice as we go that means uh, what what i expect that um each and every say clinical resident should be able uh, should be having maybe at their room or in the mess or in the restroom they can have something like a, a laparoscopic box where they can go and practice whenever they are free and it should be that easily available and not just be confined to the simulation lab or a skill lab so these are the couple of examples of low cost simulation in various fields like gi surgery pediatric surgery plastic surgery urology neurosurgery etc of uh, two more terminologies that i want to uh, talk about is uh, reliability and uh, validity reliability is basically uh, how consistent uh, how what is the consistency of the measure is and validity is basically how accurate the measure is so definitely you will be thinking of where if we are talking about the low cost simulation what is the reliability and validity so this line i have just straight away taken from this particular uh, uh review um by uh, sharma et al which says most low cost simulations are reliable and valid although perfectionists continue to have uh, continue to be skeptical about the same so i um, i agree there are certain uh, Uh, drawbacks or limitations of low cost simulation but definitely we need to work on uh, uh, to make the low cost simulations reliable and valid but uh, looking at the like country like india where we have severe resource constraint we need to go ahead with something low cost and something which uh, which will be more uh, accessible to all so uh, they say c1 do one teach one so do two but i say c1 do one teach one and make one basically it is time that our uh, residents and medical students uh, start using their innovative minds and come up with innovative uh, low cost solutions so that uh, we can do uh, more and learn more skills which probably is not uh, practically possible with the commercial simulations again uh, low cost simulation uh, as according to this particular study they say low cost low fidelity simulation and high cost high fidelity simulations are just a continuum of the same spectrum and these are not actually two approaches so basically we need to uh, 
evaluate and see as to which part of the spectrum we are in so it is actually the same it is the same masterpiece uh, uh, a low cost low fidelity simulation is probably on the lower end but a high cost high fidelity simulation is on is at the other end but it is the same thing um, in uh, to best of my knowledge and to the literature that i have reviewed there is no much difference uh, that has been shown between uh, how how a trainee acquires the skill there is no difference between the skill that is acquired by low fidelity or a high fidelity simulation so uh, that's all uh, and i'll be uh, happy to answer and i think uh, the house is open for discussion it will be good that i I'll, i also want to uh, hear what are the other uh, people's have to say um, so thank you once again thank you shs for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, present this uh, difficult topic but um, i'm a real uh, uh i'm somebody who is very much into low cost simulations and uh, definitely i think this is the only way country like india can move forward and uh, each and everybody will be able to uh, learn the 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 com the competency that they can have is only through uh, something like a low cost simulation and only way that uh, we can learn uh, each and everyone can learn is by if we also give our thought and mind and time to innovate one so uh, uh i think uh, that's all I, i'll uh, i'll hand over to uh, uh kirti shri for kirti shri for uh, for the further talk thank you thank you so much sir that was actually a great lecture so anyone you can actually uh, interact you are open for discussion the crowd is open for discussion you can ask questions i think yeah, can uh, you hear me mr yes sir uh, mr arun raj i think uh, he raised his hand so you are open to ask i have a question here um what about simulation lab which is high cost to establish but it can be shared with a lot of people over a huge catchment area um yeah that's a that's a that's a excellent question uh but uh, practically speaking i have thought uh, i have given a lot of uh, thought to uh, this particular question uh, the problem is uh, even if you see even the best centers in the country and also in the world suppose i talk about uh, cpr man lincoln which is one of the most common uh, uh, which is one of the most which is one of the most commonly used uh, mannequin or uh, simulation they a maximum number that a uh, institution will be having will be about 6 and practically speaking if you see uh, a medical college per se they not only have mbbs students which are about 100 to 150 number and then there are about 4 uh, years of student one years of intern then there are nurses there are doctors there are paramedics and uh, so so basically uh, there is a huge number of people who also need to learn this particular basic uh, basic uh, uh, basic skill so definitely just even for a, me a single medical college having a simulation lab uh, is is probably uh, not enough so uh, we definitely need to have even more number of uh, uh, such high fidelity uh, simulations and if you want and uh, giving the uh, looking into the the limited number of time that we are having for uh, the training 
it is uh, not possible that everybody will have ample amount of time and uh, place. Forget about uh, having one simulation lab in a district and everybody will be able to uh, use that. So practically it is not uh, feasible. And uh, I don't think anywhere in the uh, world they'll be having such facility that they'll be able to cater such a uh, population. So I think that's uh, that if that answers your question uh, satisfactorily. I think we have a question from uh, Mr. Arun. I think uh, somebody is requesting uh, somebody is requesting for the uh, for muting the uh, for unmuting the mics. Yeah, I have. I also uh, I have worked with uh, certain groups. Uh, such as Japaigo and uh, I've been talk with uh, people from Ames and uh, in the state government also. I know that uh, this sounds very uh, lucrative that central government is planning. But uh, to be honest, in my state where I'm currently, they have been planning for past five years and nothing much has been done. That is one thing. And also, uh, like I was saying, basically, all these uh, high cost, high fidelity mannequins, they are extremely expensive uh, to keep. And uh, I, I, I call it coffin in and coffin out approach. So basically the only use that the commercial mannequins are having currently, which cost actually in crores and not even in lakhs, is basically they, they are put outside the box once there is a inspection, an MC inspection. And once the inspection is over, they put the mannequins back into the box and they put it back in the Almira. So practically, this is what is happening. If anybody else is also having a simulation lab, they'll be knowing that uh, very well because it's not just my words. Actually, these these are the people uh, I have I have uh, gone across uh, India and I know this is what the practical scenario is because technically speaking, India is not that rich. And even in the West, they find it extremely difficult to maintain such uh, mannequins. Anybody else has any other uh, questions? Good evening, sir. Uh, well, this is not a question, just a comment that uh, I'm Indu. I'm working. I'm an anesthesiologist yeah. uh, in PJ. Uh, do you mean uh, the, uh... hello? This one, low cost simulation model slides. Uh, we do have a skill lab, but the thing is that uh, men, the students will uh, they will get an opportunity to visit to the skill lab. Maybe once in six months. Actually, a student. lot of work has been done in maybe in small, small group across the world. Uh, basically, um, everybody feels that uh, low cost simulation are actually um, the way. I'll just I'll just share a few examples of uh, uh, low cost simulation. I fully uh, agree with you. And, like for, uh, for example, uh, this one. Um, so basically, uh, this is a low cost simulation using fabric. And uh, these are all uh, all the data that I'm showing is from uh, index journals and which have been published. And people have uh, made such uh, low cost thing. Even people have made uh, this used banana for learning to suture. Yeah, and somebody when has small, used small the like can opener of Coca-Cola can to learn how to learn uh, to tie a knot. This is a laparoscopic skill trainer that uh, somebody has made using a cardboard box. Uh, using the foam and all people have made uh, IV trainer. This is uh, somebody has made a uh, uh, trainer to examination of uh, a vaginal examination and Similarly, for cervical dilatation, a low cost simulation model to uh, for ultrasound guided uh, venous access, 
a very important skill that needs to be learned at uh, ICU level for training uh, obstetric hemorrhage. So these are certain examples that uh, that I can tell you for uh, low cost simulations that are and there are a lot of literatures available if uh, somebody wants to get more literature I can um, I can also share with them uh, the same. Uh, that's my number and uh, uh, you can also contact me through uh, WhatsApp and I'll be happy to collaborate in any of the efforts if anybody is interested in uh, low cost simulations. uh the my contact number is in the in the is is on the screen you can see that and uh, uh there's a question um uh, that uh, how can collaboration with other institution or industry partners supports the development and maintenance of uh of a private simulation lab so um, so i think what what we can uh uh, collaboration with uh, industry per se, I think it is kind of difficult because um, how industries work, how healthcare industry work is basically on uh, on uh, uh, profit. So uh, what I think they may not be really be interested because I'll tell you one example from my college that is uh, CMC Velour. So there they had uh, Ladle's mannequin uh, and uh, what they wanted was uh, since they had the basic mannequin they only wanted the re replacement of the used thing so suppose there are these uh, these uh, these IV cannulas which are uh, which after say 20-30 times they have been used and they are they are unable to use it further so when they asked the, the, the company so they were not getting that type of support so i think what what is uh, probably what what is what the industry wants is that that uh, uh, people buy the whole thing again the whole simulation that cost probably uh, 30 40 lakhs the whole thing has to be bought which again at a uh, institution level may not be that much be feasible but at collaboration at a at a small level at a, at a, our level it's probably good we can uh, have probably a small uh, say uh, discussion where where uh, where we can discuss ideas as to how low cost simulations can be made they can be validated and they can be uh, made into uh, a reliable uh, use per se so that's i think uh, what i think is a practical way out and uh, yeah, definitely we can, uh, regarding private simulations lab, we can individual, uh, each and every uh, mannequin or each and every task is different. So probably it has to be individualized as to how uh, how it can be, how the maintenance work can be done at a low cost. Oh, sir, we have uh, question. Can you please provide difference between low cost and low fidelity simulation? Low cost is basically, um, actually, uh, that's a good question. Uh, what we think low cost is uh, generally confused with low fidelity. Low fidelity is basically, what it means is key, fidelity is basically how close something is with reality. So how, how we can uh, understand fidelity is basically, that's why I showed that image, uh, this one. So basically what fidelity uh, means is how close something is to the reality. So suppose I um, I talk about a suturing model. So uh, coming back to this example of the suturing, uh, this is a good example maybe. So this example, if you see the, the, uh, the, the one that we are seeing here is a low cost. And it's also low fidelity where they have say just use the banana skin as a suturing model. Whereas suppose I take a very, very high end uh, mannequin and I practice suturing that will be high end, high fidelity uh, uh, simulation. So uh, fidelity is basically just how close it is to reality and cost is the basically how much it costs. So generally 
by uh, generally what it is thought that if something is low fidelity it is uh, low cost but may not really be uh, true in uh, in all uh, in all sense sir uh, we have question from jaya j so uh, the question is sir i'll show you please the, can you share uh, the somebody has about the the three tables that we were seeing i think they're talking about this thing these are the different uh that i was talking about the various uh low cost uh innovations in various uh various fields so basically it's not just uh not only these are low cost simulations there are much more to it if you um if you want to uh go through more of the simulations you can also i'll also advise you to uh check out a website uh, i uh, it's called simucon.in simucon.in you can go through that website a lot of examples will be also be uh, given of uh, low cost simulation so one is this gi surgery then the pediatric surgery the plastic surgery examples the urology surgery examples and low cost in uh, neurosurgery so these are the couple of examples that uh, we have um another message uh, clear my perception i am handling with ar vr in our simulation lab but that is the most expensive in our purchase list uh, but i noticed that your slide it is mentioned low cost yeah actually i have mentioned low cost because um now now with the advent of uh, uh, like there are people if you go into the literature you will find that there are a lot of examples of how people have uh, created low cost simulation models using augmented reality and virtual reality so what you are having is probably something which is a commercial but uh, there uh, in literature there are many uh, uh, many examples that have been uh, mentioned which are using augmented reality and virtual reality as uh, uh, to make uh, low cost simulations and i also want to encourage our uh, the engineering students and uh, uh, our uh, young minds that they go into do go and venture out now uh, artificial intelligence has also come so these are certain things that are uh, untouched untouched area where we can use uh, low cost simulation and it will be good to know how uh, how certain how these these modalities will be able to help us in uh, uh, making low cost simulations sir uh, there is a question older question sir from jaya ghosh sir can you share some papers on low cost simulation any other questions that we have sir uh jaya ghosh has uh, asked to share some you. papers thank you uh, from uh, my side also and thank you sss for uh, giving me the uh, the time and opportunity to share my thoughts on this topic sure thank you yeah thank Have you sir day. thank you sir Thank you.